Good evening, and welcome to another powerful edition of Community Defender. I'm going to be your host this afternoon. Uh, our powerful guest is Mr. Russell Lambert, Sr., and we're going to, as you can see, the topic is who killed my sons, and we're going to dive right up into this. This is a live segment. You can reach us at 337-366-8950. 337-366-8950. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Sis Khadija. Uh, I would like to say a shout out to Miss Shirley Welcome. Miss Shirley Welcome, we want you to get well soon. Also to the Valo family who lost a, um, a close member. Uh, how you doing, Mom Joyce Valo? Uh, we hope that uh, the loss of your sister, things do get better real soon. Also, we have some out of town uh, family members. We want to say a shout out to Aunt Nanny, uh, Aunt Mary Dell, and Aunt Dorothy, and uh, to their beloved sister, uh, Genevieve Broussard. Uh, happy early birthday, who she's going to be 80 years old. She kind of thinks she's 34. <laughs> also, uh, defending our community, Mr. Kevin Broussard, who comes on every other Wednesday. We want to send a shout out to Mr. Kevin Broussard for his show at 4.30 uh, to uh, 5.30 p.m., a live segment every other Wednesday. So not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. As you can tell, uh, this is a, a hard, hard topic. We have Mr. Russell Lambert Sr. himself, who lost three sons within one, uh, one year. Uh, the, the topic is... You know, trying to find out, you know, if indeed the, the whoever, the people that, and I, and I hate to call them people, but whoever killed his two sons, um, Mr. Lambert, go ahead and, and tell us something about uh, your, 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 your handsome son. Well, uh, uh, basically, uh, what I want to say is uh, I want to reach out to the public, you know, uh, and I want to thank Ms. Katija for having me on this live show. To speak about who killed my sons. Uh, uh, I was March the 5th, uh, 2012, was the date Rusty was killed. Uh, he was stabbed to death brutally. It was a real tragic thing. And uh, throughout the process, uh, I would want to say probably two weeks before Rusty, we put him in the ground. I lost another son, which was an accident. His name was Bohamed Lambert. He uh, died tragically too. He was a butcher at Brewers Mart, and uh, he accidentally cut his finger cutting chicken. And instead of falling backwards, he fell forward oh. while the saw was going on, and it cut his neck so bad oh my he God. bled to death oh at Brewers Mart. So sorry. Yes, ma'am. And in the following week, uh, I want to say Isaiah. The following Thursday. Uh, May the 23rd, uh, I would want to say about 12, 12 o'clock, 12.01 that morning. Mm -hmm. Isaiah, in the process, I guess, trying to find out who killed Rusty, and he was on a rampage looking for his brother's killer. Yes. And he accidentally, not accidentally, he got shot in the head and in the eye on Goldman, on Goldman Street. And all of these incidents happened in the, in the vicinity of Marsh Street. Okay, okay. Uh, and of course, uh, the listening audience and uh, uh, everyone that's hearing the story, you know, you definitely have our deepest sympathy. Now, uh, I'm, I'm trying, I mean, and there, there, there could never be any type of closure, particularly mm -hmm. when you lose children Correct. in such horrific manner. Now, can you, can you help me out here? When uh, Russell was stabbed to death, what is the s surrounding circumstances behind his murder? Well, <coughs> I'm not quite sure, Ms. Khadija, because we, we never really got no information from the police department. Uh, the day that he got murdered, uh, the following day, police officers was at, came to the house and they say they were doing investigation, and uh, they didn't have no DNA. He bled out mm -hmm. around the post office where they found mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I wouldn't. I don't even know what the circumstances are, why he was killed, or for what reason. So uh, the the detective on the lead detective on 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 your son case. Uh, what's his name and what is he saying? Well, they've had. I don't want to say. Probably three detectives. This like Detective Peterson was the last is the. Uh, uh, the uh, last detective, head detective, on the case now. Uh, the two other detectives, I forgot their name because you know, time that went by so fast and then so slow, uh, I can't remember their name. But they was basically trying to uh, find out who did the killing. They said they had suspects, but they couldn't reveal the name because they wasn't too sure. They just didn't want to arrest nobody. Even as today, they do have suspects, but they want to be sure Okay, and they got the correct person before they can do anything. Right, right, and, right. and I can understand there is, there yeah. is a, a certain type of uh, privacy that you have to keep from the public yes, to make sure when you're yes, doing sir. your investigation that it, it does not compromise the investigation itself. Correct. Uh, and uh, you know, Russell, he was he was stabbed to death. You have Isaiah, who was in the for looking for who killed Russell, and Isaiah was shot in the head and in the eyes. Exactly, exactly. So those those two cases there, uh, they they are related. Uh, have the police told you that? Well, what happened with Isaiah? Excuse me. They did have a suspect. They arrested the little guy okay. because his daddy said that he was the one that shot Isaiah. He got arrested, but in the process, they didn't have enough evidence to, c to keep the little guy, so they let him go. So we ain't sure. I mean, there's been all kinds of stories, you know, uh, right. who did this and who did what. Uh, uh, I'm not really sure, so he got cut loose, but he ended up getting shot anyway. And through the stories out of street talk, they said that he was the one that killed Rusty too. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I, I, I can't believe it. As a matter of fact, we all were suspects in the murder case. So. Yeah, but um, I'm somewhat surprised that the uh, uh, Lafayette Police Department uh, have not come to a, uh, a, a complete conclus uh, conclusion at this time since, you know, it's been, uh, you know, you had one that was in 2012? All of them was in 2000. Two 2012. Yes, ma'am. You, know, uh, you know, several years have passed by and still there's, there's nothing. No. So what, what we're asking the listening audience, if indeed you... It, I mean, you've seen the pictures, you've seen those handsome young men that, that all lost their lives horrifically. If indeed you have any lead or you may have heard something, uh, the lead detective is Peterson. And you could reach Mr. Peterson at 337-296-4282. The lead detective is Mr. Peterson, and you could reach him at 337-296-4282. Now, now, the... The, the impact of, of your life, you know, how can you go on just knowing that, you know, the, uh, half of your heart is, is uh, gone? Definitely. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, uh, it's really, it's, yeah. it's, it's really, really hard. It's, it's, it's hard every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Give me a minute, Anna. Yeah, yeah, and this is a live segment, and it's it's Community Defender. Uh, we're hosting this show, uh, Brother Daryl and Sister Deborah and Brother Oscar. Uh, they're at Savior's Day, uh, and uh, taking care of business there. Here, we just trying to get information from the public to help the lead detective, who is Mr. Peterson. Uh, Mr. Peterson number is 337-296-4282. And really, we, we would not give out your telephone number because it has to go to the lead detective because yes, they have the resources of, of, of finding out. And, and maybe 
uh, we could have Mr. Peterson come on, not giving us any information about the, 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 the case, their investigation, but, you know, uh, w what were some of the circumstances behind the death, behind yeah. the murder, right. you know? And you, you really don't know where to, where to turn when you're talking about a, a horrific uh, crimes like this. Correct. Uh, from, from the public, um, uh, it, I'm, I'm trying to find out were, were there any type of um, uh, fundraiser uh, for you with, with the, the burial of, of your son? I mean, I don't... I don't well, uh, 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 for Rusty, we, uh, he wasn't insured, so we, uh, we did a fundraiser to bury him. We had to raise the money. And yeah. uh, his baby mama, uh, Nicole Mitchell, uh, she put up some money, Bo raised money. We all got together, got the together. sisters, the, you know, his yes. sister, and yeah. we raised money. Yeah. And, and the contribution was so uh, great for that. Uh, 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 the money still kept coming on about two, three months after Rusty passed away. The money yes. was still. Yes. So we, what we did, my daughter set up a fund mm -hmm. at a kitchen funeral home for okay, uh, uh, kitchen. people. Yes, ma'am. People that, you know, like if they kids die or anybody that passed away, yes. you can go through the, through the kitchen and get the fund. So, yes. you know, you a little extra money that they did send. Mm -hmm. She set up that fund. And, and, and I couldn't talk about my impact because it's, 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 uh, it's, it's so hard to explain that impact because uh, it's a devastating impact. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you, you know, you never know until it, it's, it's come knocking on your door because uh, I, would, I would watch people that had kids pass away, but I wasn't, you know, numb to that. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But now that I know, it's not a day that go by that I don't think about. It might be watching TV, here it come. But, but the, the, the antidote of this tragic is learning how to deal with it because this is going to be a lifetime thing until I pass away. Oh, yeah. And I would love to just know, even if it would never be, the only thing that they can close for us it's is good. knowing who did the killing. Mm -hmm. For us, for closing what we feel in my heart is because yes. I'm dealing with the living and the dead because I only have two kids left. Oh, yes. I have a daughter and a son. Of course, I have a stepdaughter, you know, and some stepkids, but I'm talking about from my ex-wife. She had two other kids mm -hmm. from my ex-wife besides them. Mm -hmm. So the impact, and I live with my daughter now, my oldest daughter. Okay, yeah. And I asked them to come, but they didn't want to come because oh, yes. they didn't want to relive. Yes. And, and, and what I mean by dealing with the dead, I've been doing this for seven years, but the living is knowing, watching your kids going through, especially my daughter, she's thinking about her mom every day mm -hmm. and knowing her brother's gone and how they got killed. Yes. It'll never be, my life will never be the same mm -hmm. since 2012. It's never been the same. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 I rise up and then I fall down. Yes. I rise up, I just can't stay focused enough to continue on. And, 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 you know, every day, mm -hmm. it's like, it's just killing me slow. Yes. On the inside. Yes, yes. People look at you and, you know, oh, you okay? No. No, you could it's never a, be it's okay. It's a slow thing. The process is, it's humongous, I, I don't know. Yes, and, yes, and, yes. And my story is to let other people know. My testimony for other people, you never know what you're going through, your, your situation, if I can, my situation can give hope to other people that lost their family members or whatever, to let you know that behind behind other folks, there's things happening way worse than what you're going through, you know. I'm sure they have incidents that happen way worse than mine that I've never known, no. Mm. Three sons in one, in one the same year. Oh, yeah. Uh, two weeks apart in the same year. You know how terrible that was? Yes, yes, I, I definitely. I couldn't, uh, well, when I went to see Bo, he had to uh, hold me up, cause, uh, which was so crazy, because I kind of dressed when Rusty died, you know what I mean? I stayed like, well, you know, most people sit in the front. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't just look at him from a view, but when Bo died, 
which wasn't too far from Ruston, I was asking myself what was really going on, you know. And then uh, right after that, Isaiah, so when I went to see Bo, they had to hold me up because uh, I couldn't stay inside. And, and you know what was so hilarious? When he got cut, it was blood all wow. over. And, 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 and uh, I had a white shirt on, and, 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 and it's not a joke. And after everything was all over with, mm -hmm. where he was cut, my shirt showed just blood. And it, and it tripped me out because when I seen that, and it was the same place where he was chopped up. Mm. So, I mean, it was, I don't know if he was leaving his mark or, or what, or whatever it was. But Isaiah, I couldn't attend Isaiah funeral because it was just, it was just way too much. I couldn't go to the funeral. So see, because Isaiah was adopted by uh, uh, Novi Morgan and Liz Morgan. So, you know, they was, they was, they was good. Yeah. But they yeah. did what they could for Isaiah, but he was rebellious. I yes. guess he wanted to be with us, but I really want to commend Novi no. and Liz because they, was, they tried their best mm -hmm. to do what they could, but he just, he wasn't really feeling it, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I sent out my best for them too, you know, mm -hmm. to let them know. Oh. Appreciate everything that they did for yeah. Isaiah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His canola. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. in in uh, Isaiah, uh, he was. He, wait, I'm not. Uh, uh, it was okay. I, Isaiah, Isaiah was w he was shot in the head, in the head and in the yeah, eye. Yes, ma'am. And in yeah. where? What location? On Goldman, on the corner of Goldman. And what I want to say, Goldman and. Uh, oh, I guess it would be Sampson. Well, when you're coming from Goldman, you cross away. They got the curve. They got he got mm -hmm. shot right in that curve on Goldman Street. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and when they knocked on my door, I was matter of fact, you know what? Me and him had got into it that day. He came to the house and, and he knocked. Matter of fact, it's a good thing my brother and my sister was there because he was mad. Okay. Banging on the door, you know, talking crazy. He had a gun. Mm -hmm. And he said, open the door. And my brother and my sister told me to open the door because he was still, I mean, he was rampaging for about a week. Okay. You know, he got a wife. His wife was, uh, 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 and he got two beautiful kids. All right. You know, uh, uh, I can't remember uh, her name. Well, I'm caught up in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But his wife. His wife, uh, uh, Victoria. That's her name, Victoria. Very mm -hmm. beautiful girl. Okay. Got, he got a daughter and a son. Uh -huh. Isaiah and uh, I forgot the little baby girl name. Yeah. You know, but uh, anyway, he said that I didn't. You know, he was just rebellious. He didn't. I don't want to say what he said. But right, right. There's no need to. But he left, and I was afraid that day. Twelve o'clock that night, he knocking on my door, but I thought it was him coming back. Okay. To retreat, but I didn't know. You didn't know. He knocking on the door. I was mm. paranoid. I couldn't do nothing. I stayed in the bed. I said, who is it? Mm -hmm. He called my name. It was my stepson, Reverend Senior. Uh, I said, that deep. Okay. I said, what? He said, it just shot Isaiah. I said, my God. I froze after that. That was my last son. Not saying the last son, but I mean, just uh -huh. that quick. Mm-hmm. It was a week apart. Him and Bo was on a Thursday, too, the 17th and the 23rd. Mm -hmm. Bo was 12 on 1 p.m. Isaiah was 12 on 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. After they did that, I lost that. Uh, that was it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I, I mean, I, I don't know. And, and uh, this, is, this, is, this is a live segment. Uh, we are discussing who killed uh, my sons and uh, it's 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 Mr. Russell Lambert who lost uh, three three of his sons within a uh, not even a good a couple yeah. of weeks apart. Weeks apart. Right, and uh, the lead detective here in Lafayette is Detective Peterson, and his telephone number is three three seven two nine six four two eight two. 
337-296-4282. And uh, even if it's, uh, it, he, he's reaching out to the community just to try to see if you uh, know something, if you've heard something, uh, he's trying to get what little bit of closure that he could possibly get when it comes down to the horrific m murdering of his uh, two, two sons. And, and the third son, he uh, accidentally uh, cut, a f cut his finger and then uh, fell on that, on, on, on the, on that mm -hmm. cutter and, and cut his neck. Cut and his neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, accidentally. And, and uh, that was Bo. Right. And Correct. that's, that that's was yeah, that's that bro's mark. And everything, and, and um, hope I don't I don't know if you if you all got compensated or anything, but sometimes for uh, on on some of these jobs they do have uh, some type of compensation when it come down to death. I mean to accidental de uh, death. Uh, we are uh, here with Mr. Lambert, and uh, it's a it's an open call, and you could reach us at three three seven three six six eight nine five zero. Three three seven three six six eight nine five zero, and I understand um, you 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 were scheduled to be on uh, Portia. We was sent our uh, shout out to Portia Evans, yes, who uh, she do th the the same thing right here in uh, in Lafayette uh, with 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 her show community oriented, and and that's what we are about. Uh, it, it's a live segment at three three seven three six six eight nine five zero. Now I. I I have the UCR report, and that's like the Uniform Crime Report. And in 2017, they had like the, um, here in Lafayette, they had like uh, 24 uh, homicides, and in 2018, nine homicides, uh, 21 rape in both 2017 and 2018, robbery, is 175 in, in 2017 and 158 in 2018. Uh, assault, 503 people were assaulted in seven, uh, 2017 and 493 in 2018. Burglary, 1,001 uh, and in, um, in 2018, we had 2019 burglary. Well, theft, uh, 4,555 and 17 and 4,485. Uh, auto theft, 293 in 2017 and in uh, 2018, 378. <laughs> so, so um, <laughs> La Lafayette pretty much, uh, you know, they, they pretty much have uh, a, a semi-good record when it comes down to uh, solving crimes uh, uh, relatively quick. Uh, some of the some of the public service announcement that they have that that's out there. Uh, they they're letting people know that you know don't le don't leave your car unlocked because this is where all of the thefts come by unlocked doors. You know, and uh, I just hope that and and you you never know maybe maybe we could uh, have Mr. Peterson on not so much as to talk about uh, the uh, evidence, but to give people, you know, some type of uh, a warning or what to expect when uh, these type of crimes happen. And I'm more than sure uh, you, you have a lot of drugs that's involving a lot of crimes and everything, and uh, it's just, it ju you just don't get it. How do you just actually just brutally just just kill uh, someone, uh, even if you have a reason. I mean, you just don't kill a person just to be killing them. And uh, we're here. It's a live segment at 337-366-8950. 337-366-8950. Um, uh, Mr. Lambert, what, what, what else would you, are you trying to help accomplish uh, by going uh, public uh, and trying to get word a word from the community and everything. What what else are you, are you trying to accomplish? Well, uh, what I'm trying to accomplish is to uh, get the Lafayette Police Department to get more involved in the case because uh, okay they making us feel like we're not important or, or whatever the reason is because they they don't never 
uh, try to call me or, you know, to let me know that, okay, well, Mr. Lamb, but, you know, when they first started it, yes, but now I haven't heard, uh, I have to call them. Okay. You know, and, 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 you know, I'll be out there in the streets and I hear this and that and whatever, you know, I try to put myself in arm's way because I know whatever was going on in the death situation, you have to be almost in that death situation too, mm -hmm. just to want to know. Well, yes. You see what I'm saying? So I'm putting my life at risk when they should be at least, you know what I mean, uh, trying to say, well, Mr. Lambert, we, we got such and such and such. It's been, it's going on seven years. In the last four years, I haven't heard from the Lambert Police Department. Are you serious? I never heard nothing from the police, nothing. What? No. So now, now I would want to say last year, in 2018, they came, because I live right there on uh, Bella Street, and they was real deep. Uh, they named a few people uh, that I really know, mm -hmm. because it was a girl involved in Rusty case and got killed. They said it, was a, it was a girl involved. It was a girl involved and two other guys. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they said it happened at the travel host. They named some girls. They named some guys. Uh, this one girl, I don't want to name her name because we real close, and, and, and every time we get together, she always moaning about that situation mm. somehow or another. And they did, the police officer, Detective Peterson, asked about her, and he had a feeling that she really had some information that she would hold it to. I don't know. Okay. See, okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know every time we together, she talk about Rusty. Mm -hmm. She talk about my kids, basically. Mm -hmm. She cried. She said she was there. I mean, if he was there, well, why is it you're not going forward and letting well, us yeah. people know what's going on? Yeah. You know, even Detective Peterson named her name. He said, well, what about such and such? And then when I told him, I said, well, I mean, I don't know. He yeah. said, well, he didn't believe. He thinks she do know. She just not saying. Okay. So, okay. you know. Uh, but in the, uh, but you, you hadn't heard nothing from the department in the last four years? In the last four years. I hadn't heard that, That's why I was asking. Uh, you, the, one of the meetings that we was trying to get to go and meet with the lead detective. Right. Uh, Carly, you have a question or a comment? Yeah, you don't mind if I just listen in a little while. The, the, you you, you go, guys have gone over a great point, a valid point. I, I just want to listen in a little while. Go ahead, and I, I'm going to jump in. Okay, well, you, you, you're you on live right now. Okay. Go ahead with the, the discussion. Okay. Well, yes, I was just trying to, I was, we were just, the, the uh, Lafayette Police Department haven't given any information within the last four years. It's going on seven years. Mr. Lambert lost Russell, uh, uh, Bohammed and Isaiah, you know, but um, uh, Bohammed, he was accidentally, uh, uh, had an accident at Brosmart here in Lafayette, but uh, Russell Lambert, he was stabbed to death, brutally stabbed to death. Definitely. And Isaiah, he was shot in the head and in the eye. Right. And, and uh, we're trying to find out exactly with the Lafayette Police Department Oh, what, what's the stalemate, you know, because they haven't contacted Mr. Russell within, uh, for the last four years. No. And, and you know, and, and, uh, I'm trying, and I'm trying to get a grasp of that. I mean, three, oh, you got three uh, uh, people who have lost their lives and three of it's kind of like so much of a co uh, coincidence that these things happen. And the way sometimes law enforcement deals with uh, tragedies in our community, and I'm going to use those words, and people, I'm pretty sure people know what they mean by our community. Our community. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's like, like a bill, like they're not interested in, or they don't put all their resources into solving these cases. Now, Sister Khadija, I would ask the, the guests, uh, what's the disposition of all the cases? I mean, all of them solved, well, we know it by the accident, but the other two, are, are they, uh, are any one of those two got solved? No, none of them had gotten solved, and that's what uh, Mr. Lambert was saying is that uh, he hadn't heard anything from Mr. Peter from the from the Lafayette Police Department. 
within the last four years. And now the lead detective is Detective Peterson, whose telephone number is 337-296-4282. And it, it, it's, it's just ironic because they're, uh, they're up on, on TV or wherever all the times talking about, you know, mm -hmm. crime stoppers and all right. this other kind of stuff. I'm just shocked. Well, wait, well, you know, also, Sister Khadija, that should be outraged in the community because when you don't solve one crime, uh, you have the potential not to solve others. Yeah. And all, ca all cases should be treated uh, in, a, in a sense that it's urgent to solve them because it not only does it uh, serve to ease the minds of our loved ones, it also serves as a, 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 a situation to stop others from doing uh, engaging in, in committing crimes against individuals. So I, uh, I would like to think if with the previous administration, law enforcement uh, jurisdiction in the, New in the Lafayette City Police uh, under Chief, uh, Chief Jim, uh, Jim Craft? No, well, it could have, it wasn't under uh, Jim Craft because uh, I know he works for the governor. I'm not sure. Was it Jim Craft? Uh, well, police chief Jim Craft. Uh, right. Was, that's a, that's an investigating agency. Or, uh, was it Lafayette Parish Sheriff or the Lafayette City Police? It's Lafayette City Police. Lafayette City Police. Yeah, that, that would be Jim Craft. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be Jim Craft. Uh, right. okay. The previous uh, individual, because uh, this chief, this, this administration just took office with the new chief. Right. Uh, uh, over a year, you know. So, and, and the thing is, with and Jim Craft should. Uh, it, that should have been a priority, even as he serves as the head of the Louisiana Police Chief Association. Yeah. People should get on the telephone, call them up, and urge uh, Chief Kraft to come back home and clean up the mess uh, in his department of, of not solving that problem. And I could say this, Sister Khadija, I know you would stand by. Yeah. Uh, we know there's, a, there's been a lot of issues with that uh, under uh, Chief Kraft, yeah. that individuals were afraid to speak out, much like dealing with the situation in New Iberia with Sheriff Ackle. Oh, we yeah. to be able to yeah. uh, tell these public servants that they are not above uh, the, the people. You know, they, they all, almost all of them have that Trump mentality. They serve who they want to serve, when they want to serve, and why they want to serve. I and I'm sorry that. to take it there, my brother, but I've just got to be real with yeah, you. Yeah, you got that. to light a fire under that situation. I urge you to take it national. Uh, I w uh, we have some very good connections on the national level. Really? We, uh, we have uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, the lawyer for Trayvon Martin. We have a couple of people that we have interviewed. We also have a connection to the Carl Nelson Show, which the people who mm -hmm. own uh, TV One uh, and Radio One, uh, and I hope uh, we could arrange that you would be able to go on his national show, which takes uh, place in Washington, D.C., where you could uh, be a call-in guest. So there's very many avenues, brother, you could take. To, you you have to take uh, take it to another level. You, uh, you know, what Sister Khadija and I have been dealing with, we counted on the system working, but uh, most of the time, from the Geno 6 to uh, the Sugar Town documentary, we had to light a fire up under the system in order for the system to acknowledge these problems. So I just want to say that to you. You got my prayers, and I would do anything in our power or the people we connected to to get your story out or to get your information out. And mm -hmm. thank you so much. Uh, bro Brother Jay, before you leave, Please. oh, Please. Uh, we have this good sister out in New Iberia. She lost a son, and she has an yeah. or organization. Uh, that's that's Miss uh, Beverly. What? I'm I'm asking. Oh, you oh, you're talking about? Oh, uh, that, no, that's Miss uh, Rosalind Rosalind Bob. Okay, Miss Bob, Miss Bob. Well, uh, I know Miss Miss Bob. She has spoken uh, on all different uh, 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 levels, you know, for the loss of her her son and everything like that. And she do have an organization that no parent want to be involved with, yeah. but it's an organization that is needed since so many parents have lost their 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 children. Uh, uh, if you could get her telephone number for me, yes. I would like to yes. uh, give her uh, uh, Miss, Mr. Uh, Lambert uh, telephone. And, and, uh, and I'm not going to keep you any longer, but I won't also say this, sister. I want to add this, that there are a number of unsolved cases uh, in South Louisiana uh, dealing with, with families who have lost loved ones. Uh, we, and we have a case, boatload of them in New Iberia, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, under the President yeah. Sheriff Ackle. 
Right. Hopefully the new Iberia City Police would solve some of these unsolved murders uh, of young men. That is a tragedy that black men, now I'm going to say this part, black men have to lose their lives and you can't uh, uh, put a hand on who's doing all these killings, even if it's somebody of the same color. Uh, we have to solve those all, all murders. Yeah. All murders should be treated equal, or yeah. homicides, or tragedies. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, and, and then when we look at the, uh, the the Victor White the third, he was killed by um, uh, by, by 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 New Iberia Police Department, a Justin Ortiz, and I can't think of the other guy name, but he was a young man that was handcuffed and was. Um, uh, uh, allegedly, they came out with a couple of reports that he shot himself being handcuffed, and we all know that was a goddamn lie. And it's just amazing <laughs> how the far, uh, Mr. White himself, you know, he, he has gone all over the world, you know, talking about the murder of his son, you know, right, right. here. And, and so we all have, uh, uh, as, as, as uh, people in the community, as, as parents, that's part of our uh, responsibilities. Exactly, exactly. You know, uh, it's, it, your son is your son, and it, it, it's a community. It, it's all our children. You know, it's not just supposed to be your problem. It's supposed to be the community Community's problem. problem right. And I know Ms. Bob, uh, that's a hard organization that she's involved with, but uh, she comes to different uh, outlets and everything and discuss what happened, how. And she say, you, 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 you never... It's a pain that never, ever go away, never, you know. Never. But uh, her, her, her vision is to try to help other parents right, that right. is going through the same thing that she has gone, uh, had to go through. Uh, can I say? Oh, yes, Matter yes. of fact, uh, I wouldn't mind uh, getting it nationwide because what I try to do was call, uh, what's the name, uh, uh, John Walsh. I call that organization. Okay. Now, the lady wanted to take the case and they was gonna take it nationwide, but you know when you don't have no food, you don't know nobody. You okay. Know, I, was, I didn't know no numbers to call, but what she told me to do was to get the police report. Okay, the That's police the only report. Police report, okay. I called the Lafayette Police Department. You know what they told me? She said that the case was, was, was a still an open case, and they couldn't give the, uh, uh, they couldn't give that police report. She said, "What we're gonna start doing is every Wednesday, we're gonna start, you know, like what we're doing now. Yes. Seeing about what happened to us being Isaiah and what have you. They did that for two weeks, and that was a wrap. What? They, well, they refused to give me that police report. I, now, now y you're supposed to be able to get that police they report. Refuse. Uh, pay your five or you, pay your five dollar, five seven dollar. They refused. They refused. They refused me. Okay. See. Okay. So, uh, so I, I see part of the follow through that right. we have to do is go and get, yeah. uh, speak to uh, Detective Peterson. Yeah. Uh, and, and is that his cell number or just his work number? Well, it must be his work number or cell Cause number. Because I, I would ask people to just call him at three three seven two nine six four two eight two and ask him what's up with what, what's the deal yeah, man. you know on the on the lambert case you know something right. some y'all should know something lafayette is not as big, not as, big. as as new york city and, and right. I, it, it it just it just doesn't make any sense I, I mean i just ooh. you know you know what's so so uh uh it's really uh being a uh, a black man uh you know i mean i'm not a rich person i mean I no, I'm an average person. Yeah, I'm just an average man, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them solve cases in a different race where they stayed on TV two, three weeks to get that solved. Yeah. In that case, it was like hush, hush, and nothing. You know this and you know that. Well, but let me know. But do you, uh, do you actually believe that, that because uh, your child was black and not uh, white or Caucasian, that that's why it's not solved? I believe so. I think Okay, well, I, you know, I, I, I can't do nothing against your belief, but I, what I can do is say that, you know, uh, one day next week we're going to make an appointment to go and see uh, the chief of police himself. Yes, he will. You know, we, we need to go and see, um, because, because if, that, if all you needed was a police report, uh, the police report is not showing you evidence of who they think may have done this or anything like that. The police 
report is showing you what you uh, in writing <laughs> what you already know. Right. You already know that one of your sons was shot in the head and in the eye. Yes. That's that's factual. Yes, factual. You know, uh, it, it probably have the caliber of of of, of the of the weapon yeah. that they shot him with and all of that stuff. You know, it has the description of where he was, exactly. what he was wearing. Exactly. You know, your other son that was stabbed to death. To death a horrific, um, I mean, just a brutal, 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 yeah, brutal, you know, yeah. You know, I wanted to know who what? could I hook up with to go nationwide, like on ETLN, I watch that a lot and see a lot of crime being solved. Uh, okay. Matter of fact, uh, on 66, it's called Snap, and they have certain detectives do Ooh. cold cases. They come to your town to solve the cases that. Right. Cold. Why well, can I get to that? What, what's it and coming? and the police report is the only the thing, thing that is stopping you, stopping me from going Be nationwide because it's showing. Yeah, exactly. What, exactly yeah, what happened. Stop. It's not showing. No. You know. Oh, I think thus, thus, thus. Mm -hmm. All all you're saying is that at two thirty a.m. this is what happened. Right. You know. Uh, at at four thirty a.m. this is what happened. And I can't see why they wouldn't even want to give you that information. Rock, you but you know, but I mean, when when it's when it happened earlier, when it first happened. When it first happened, we did some things. Uh, uh, Nova and Liz and we got together and we did a bullet. They did a bulletin thing for Isaiah and Rusty on Mark Street. Okay. Who killed my sons? Okay. You know, or right. have you seen my son? Right. For about a week. We did a march from the post office to where Isaiah was on Goldman. Oh, you know? yes, uh, yes, yes. Fact, uh, That's the post office right there off on Marsh. Marsh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I got a little memorial right there for us. Oh, yes, yes, We started yes, from yes. right there. Uh, uh, matter of fact, Councilman, uh, 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 what I want to say. Uh, uh, was, is it Pat Lewis or Benjamin? No, it was, uh, uh, golly. You had Boudreaux? Boudreaux, he was there. He okay. was there. You know okay. what I'm saying? I didn't, s when we marched from the post office, to uh, where Isaiah was, nobody was there. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't deal with it. I just let him. I just backed up, and I respected that because they was the acting parents. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. Whatever yeah. was said or whatever, you know, I just never really hooked up with the right people. That's why I was glad. Matter of fact, I met Miss Portia. I got introduced to Miss Portia through my counselor that I have. I go see her every three weeks. Okay. For all this, you know, men and stuff I'll be having. Yes, yes, yes. And she introduced me to, she didn't introduce me, she told me about Miss Portia Adams. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, Portia do. Uh, yeah, do all uh, kinds uh, of stuff. Yeah. They, they had did a, uh, I think it was a kid thing. And you want me to tell you how I met Miss Portia? Because I came here. Okay. But I met somebody else. I forgot the lady name. She was busy. And the first thing she told me was, how I'm doing. Okay. Take care of yourself. I said, well, ma'am, I'm trying to. You know, get someone there. Because what I did was, I kind of breached my time. I gave him six years mm -hmm. to find out something or tell me something. Yes. Or anything. Call me, Mr. Lambert. Look, well, if you got somebody, then, well, you know, they don't want to tell me because they don't want my two sons to retaliate. What could they retaliate on? Right. I could be talking to the person every day around him every day or right. whoever was that. Right. Know? No, but I mean, I mean, I'm glad that. I got a chance to. I went to mm. smile one day, and guess who my uh, service worker was? Portia. Portia Evans. Okay. And okay. I told her yeah. what happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I told her about Miss Mary Smith. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, she had a son that got shot in the back that, in Dallas. That's right. Portia her did. Only son from yeah. Dallas. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And that's then she right. said, I said, well, what a coincidence. God is good. Here yeah. I'm coming to help get my light bill paid, and it's in the direction to Miss Portia Evans. Oh, yes, indeed. And that's when yes, we indeed. set up the little thing. She said, just call me a week ahead of time. But what I did, I waited a couple of weeks because I was kind of, you know, I was, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be forever. Oh, yeah. Really messed up. You yes, know, yes, yes. Say what they want, like whatever. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up going back to Smile. And she was so happy to see me. She gave me a big hug. Of course, you know, you can tell your stories to some people that and know about it, but some people, or just brush it off maybe because they don't understand yeah. or they don't want to hear. But I take it like, well, I'm thinking everybody where I'm at, but they're basically really not where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So I can't get but offended or whatever. Well, yeah, and but but really, 
in the in in the African tradition, uh, you know, your child is my child, my child is, is your child. child. Yeah, you know, it's it's community oriented. That's correct. Uh, even before you, sometimes when when people are giving presentation before the community, they have to ask permission from the elders to speak. Yeah. You know. That's showing respect, exactly. you know, and uh, just to not, uh, it haven't, be, it, it's been four years that you haven't found yes. out nothing yeah. about the, the, the brutal deaths. It just, it's just unbelievable. It's but unbelievable. Detective yeah. Peterson number is 337-296-4282. I'm going to call him tomorrow too. Yeah, okay. But we've got to uh, do uh, a complete either telephone bank, you know, uh, I, I, told you ab about uh yeah brother jay mentioned that miss bob right out of st yeah. martin out of uh, new iberia yeah. she lost a son uh portia lost a son so many others right. have lost a son and i know that there's a, an organization that yeah. no parent want to belong to but that we have a lot of parents yes. that that has to go through that ordeal and it's good to know that you have someone that's interested in that Carry right. on just trying to, to help you out, I mean, and that's all, that's all you could possibly you can get do. at this particular time because you can't get nothing else. Yeah. You can't bring your son no, back, you, and stuff, never bring him back, but it just to show you how some people are, 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 are so and, and within the midst so diabolically uh, uh, cruel to one another. Why would I uh, kill or harm somebody that you know? Right. looks like me about me and everything like I, I just we just can't get it you know i was i was in this group uh called uh what was the name of this group i was it was on the south side of it wasn't a young group but it was uh called uh uh what it was victims of uh, homicide victims okay I mean, you know what i'm saying yeah and uh uh, uh the group was good uh, right off of Camille, off of Johnson, I went there one time. Uh, it was more of an elderly type group. It wasn't a young group, right? But it, it, it was they was explaining how they feel. But it wasn't uh, active enough to really uh, keep me going. I went. People were sad. The man said he had lost his son. It's been over thirty years, and he cried every day. That man cried the whole time he was there. You know. You know what I'm saying? Old man, he was old. And they had the lady, she lost her son. She was, where she was from? Market City? Okay, and it's a group here? It's a group here called, uh, golly, I forgot the name of the group. That might be, I went to Miss Bob. Uh, 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 called, uh, friend, let me see what's the name of that thing. I got a pamphlet, but it's at home. I forgot okay. the name of the okay. group. But anyway, it's a pretty good group. You know, uh, 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 what I was trying to do was getting some, some relief. Or, or find out, you know, how far they go with their group, or if they group hook up with other groups, or yes. parents of, of yes. of victims, you know, right, stuff right, stuff like that. But uh, it was like a little small group. I think I was the only black in that too. Okay, you no, know, which it didn't, they didn't, it didn't matter to them. Right. The lady um. said she was so out of it. She get up in the morning, she stopped cleaning up, she stopped going outside, she stopped oh. everything because nothing mattered no more. And I can relate to that. You can I relate believe to that. that. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that. But you got to be strong. Some days that you can and other days you can't. Mm -hmm. It was. It's almost like a merry-go-round. It depends how many kids you lost at that time. Yes, yes. Because once it hit, it hit. There's no, yeah. you know, you're going to say, no, no. If it hit, it hit. It hit. Mm -hmm. You just got to know what to do at the time. Lay down, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. If they let you sleep. Mm, the spirit yeah. is alive. Yes, you yes. Know, but, uh. I forgot the name of that group, but it was a good group. Mm -hmm. It was a real good group. Okay. But like Brother Man was saying, it'd be nice to know, get the numbers, uh, go nationwide, and and get it solved. Well, the See well, right. The first, well, one of the first thing that we have to do with mm -hmm. our homework is, is uh, right here in, in Lafayette. We have to get those police reports. Yes. Uh, meet with the chief of police and everything, and they have to give you an update. There's no way in hell that you could tell me that we're not going to get an update uh, within the last four years. Well, something is right. not right there. Now, I, I, wanted, I would want to say Detective Peterson came to my house. He called me. 
he, he's the last leading back uh, detective on the case. He came with uh, him, and there was maybe five other detectives. You know, they showed oh. they showed concern. You know, I yeah. mean, and they said a few things. You know, to kind of enlighten me. You know, stuff like that. But I never heard from him since. Mm. I didn't call him. Mm -hmm. I called him and gave him some names to let him know that what I'm hearing. I'm right. in the street risking my life to find out who killed my son. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if I find out who killed my son, what I do? Kill him too, huh? Or well, what? No, what well, do? you would. Well, uh, I mean, it'd be a hard decision to. What right, I do? Well, yeah, but the yeah, I, I I definitely understand that. But the the best thing to uh. Is, is to have them to be found uh, guilty, right. and uh, they're going to go to prison, uh, you know, for just about the, the, the rest of their lives Correct. and everything like that. You, you can't have it both ways. Right. You right. know, you, uh, this is not the wild, wild west. No, I mean, no. This is uh, your, your hometown where uh, yeah, people yeah. respect each That's other. Right. That's right. You know, uh, I, I want to say I, uh, we have let about five minutes. I wanted to say that our show is, is dedicated to uh, the conscious black athletes, um, and I don't know if you could see uh, them right here, but that's uh, who the show is dedicated also to uh, when the sprinters Tommy Smith and John Carlos raised their fist in the black power salute in, at the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City. They were true role models. These athletes were in tune with the mood and needs of the larger black community and choose to use their international platform to protest the racism, discrimination, inequality faced by black people in America. And um, that, that, uh, that's, that's them at, at, at that particular time. And also you have Muhammad Ali uh, mm -hmm. right there too. And uh, I also have the shirt with uh, Kaepernick, you know, who's the, mm -hmm. the, the football player who uh, has been uh, white balled and everything, and really? uh, he's he the one that took the knee uh, against uh, the, uh, the 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 song <laughs> uh, uh, the song here in uh, in the United States rather, and uh, uh, and against police brutality, police uh, killings and stuff, and uh, okay. that was that was very uh, very powerful. So uh, in closing. <laughs> uh, we're here with Mr. Lambert, <coughs> and he is uh, asking for the community help in finding out the ones that murdered his son, uh, which is Russell Lambert, uh, to in 2012, brutally stabbed him to death. Um, I, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Morgan, Isaiah Morgan who was shot in the head and in the eye, and his other son was accidentally killed. Uh, at Rosemark, uh, all within that same year, and it's been about four years, you say, since you've heard anything from the Lafayette Police yeah, Department. Four years. The last time I heard from them was last year, 2018, but in between that time, from 2012 to 2016, I would call. Okay. Say, well, maybe I need to give them some time because I, mean, I wasn't mm -hmm. connected with the right people to say, well, can you help me? Yes. See what I'm saying? Yes. You know, uh, what can I do? Yes. Who can you send me to? You know, for for trying to raise money. I mean, I wasn't thinking about no raising no money. I was thinking about the lie that even if money wouldn't do no good. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? But to say, to have that known and pass my testimony on to the next person in this community to help one another. Yes. That's yes. my testimony. Yes. You that's know, your that's testimony. You know, it's never as bad as it seems. Right. You got people that's going through worse than what you're going through. But in Lafayette, I've never known nobody that lost. They say it's easier to bury your parents than your kids, and that's not a joke. Three sons in the same year, back to back to back. Mm. And you definitely have um, our yeah. deepest sympathy. Uh, we will do a follow-up on the show. Uh, we're going to go and meet with the chief of police, the lead detective who is uh, Peterson and his telephone number is 337-296-4282, the Lafayette Police Department. If you could give him a call and just ask him what's up, you know, uh, what, I mean, we're seeing the father coming on, uh, on, on, on TV and everything like that, uh, asking for court, for, for answers, you know, and why would they not give you the 
police report. I, for hell and be damned. Yeah. I don't even understand that. I couldn't either. You know, because all it is is just w the the uh, evidence of what did what his their death consists of. Right. You know, it's not no. I think John Blow did it or Joe Blow did it. No. No. That's no. not none of that. No, my son. No man. It, I didn't think it was because. The matter of fact, uh, the John Walsh Foundation, I mean, the lady didn't hesitate about nothing. She said, yes, we would like to take over your uh, situation about oh, your son. Oh, yes. She, and at that time, it was early. She said, matter of fact, and if you get the police report, probably the man would have came to Lafayette. I don't know. Yeah. Or they would have sent somebody oh, yeah. at that time. He would have he yeah, came to Lafayette. Yeah, he would have came to Lafayette. He would have came to Lafayette and get this, uh -huh. at least some kind of, Understanding of what's going on, not about where he got stabbed to death. He was going from this motel to that motel. Right. To find a way out. That's not what I mean. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yes, indeed. That that, that is absolutely correct. Yeah, you know. Absolutely correct. Okay. And you you have the number to call three three seven two nine six four two eight two and ask for Detective Peterson. You know, just uh, inquiring my.